microorganisms are ubiquitous and essential to sustain life on earth great majority of them are useful to mankind however a small percent is known to cause diseases in humans animals and in plants such organisms responsible for causing diseases are called pathogens only 1% of these pathogens are causing diseases in human beings and their existence makes medical microbiology or clinical microbiology an important branch of science medical microbiology is a branch of microbiology which deals with the identification prevention and control of disease producing microorganisms in human beings the major responsibility of this science is isolating and identifying infectious pathogens to enable physicians to treat the patients prudently intelligently and rapidly in this video i will briefly explain the steps to be followed in the identification of unknown bacterial samples in a microbiology laboratory the first and most important step in medical microbiology is the identification of disease causing organisms taxonomy is the science devoted to identify name and classify organisms the process of classification and identification are entirely different classification is the separation of organisms into distinct groups whereas identification is the determination of correct place of an organism in a previously established plan of classification Fergie's manual has been the internationally accepted reference for the identification of bacteria since 1923. Fergie's manual of systemic bacteriology arranges related bacteria into 33 groups called sections rather than into classical taxonomic groupings of phylum, class, order and family. the interrelationship of the organisms in each section is based on characteristics such as morphology staining reactions nutrition cultural characteristics physiology cellular chemistry and biochemical test results for specific metabolic end products when an unknown bacterium is isolated in the laboratory in the pure form from a sample such as food water soil air blood or tissue it is usually identified by a combination of informations gathered about the organism this includes microscopic observations like morphology and arrangement of cells gram stain and other staining reactions absence or presence of motility then the cultural characteristics of the organisms followed by the biochemical characteristics the first step in the identification of unknown bacterial sample is the analysis of morphological characteristics morphological characteristics are usually analyzed with the help of a microscope under the microscope we will initially look for the shape and arrangement of the cells bacteria can exist as spheres short rods or long rods comma shaped spirals or filaments they can be arranged in single pairs chains or clusters the shape and arrangement of the cell will give us some clue about the identity of the organisms the next step is a very important and crucial one which will differentiate the bacteria into gram positive and gram negative ones that is the gram staining procedure 
that is a most common staining technique practiced in microbiology laboratories in the identification of microorganisms. After doing the gram staining, we can go for the special structures that may be present in bacteria, which includes the presence of a flagella, which will give the organism motility. Or we can look for the presence of capsules, which are the slimy layer outside the bacteria, which makes them more virulent. Also, we can look for the presence or absence of spore. All these morphological characteristics will give us some idea about the type of organism we are studying. After observing the morphological characteristics of the organisms, we will move to the next step that is the analysis of cultural characteristics of the organism. Microorganisms produce different growth pattern and characteristics on cultivation on variety of media. These are called cultural characteristics and are used to group the organisms into different taxonomic groups. The cultural characteristics for all the microorganisms are described in Berge's Manual of Systemic Bacteriology. Usually, for the cultivation of microorganisms, the basal media or the supportive media are used. Basal medium is the one which provides all nutrients to support the growth of most of the fastidious organisms. Most commonly used basal or supportive media in the laboratory are nutrient agar and nutrient growth. Microorganisms produce discrete and well-defined colonies on nutrient agar plates. We can learn many characteristics from the colony of these organisms. Some organisms will produce pigmented colonies like golden, yellow, white or glistening colonies. The growth pattern may be also different. When it is incubated at the normal body temperature that is at 37 degrees Celsius, some will not be producing any growth, some will produce a slight growth, some will be producing moderate and some abundant growth. The shape of the colony is also important in the identification of organisms. The degree to which a colony growth is raised on the agar surface is called the elevation. The observance of elevation is also useful in the identification of organisms. Sometimes there may be no marked elevation from the surface of the medium, then it is called flat colony. If it is slightly elevated, it is called raised colony. Dome-shaped elevation is called convex and raised with an elevated convex central region is called ambulate. The appearance of outer edge of the colony is described as its margin. The margin can be sharply defined, then it is called entire. It may have marked indentation, then it is called lobate. It may be having wavy indentations called undulate. It may have tooth-like appearance, then it is called serrate, and thread-like spreading edge is called filamentous. On nutrient agar plates, we will also look for the density of the colony. The colony can be opaque or translucent. Nutrient agar plates are preferred over the nutrient growth cultures in the identification of microorganisms because in growth cultures, microorganisms do not produce discrete colonies. Their growth is identified by the increase of turbidity in the growth. However, they show characteristic growth pattern in nutrient growth which can aid in the identification of organisms. The growth patterns in nutrient growth includes uniform fine turbidity in which finely dispersed growth is seen throughout the media. The organisms may also produce flaky aggregates dispersed throughout the media then the growth is called flocculent. 
thick or pad like growth on the surface is called pellicle formation concentration of the growth at the bottom of the growth culture which can be granular flaky or flocculent is called sediment after studying the cultural characteristics of the organisms on the basal or the supportive media like the nutrient agar or nutrient growth we can move on to some special media that will bring out the special characteristics of the organisms differentiation of microorganisms which are morphologically and biochemically related is quite difficult the use of special media such as differential selective enriched enrichment media etc is found to make the identification process much easier some of the medias we usually use in microbiology laboratory can act as both the differential and the selective media most commonly used differential cum selective media is mekonke agar mekonke agar contains crystal violet which is inhibitory to gram positive bacteria the medium also contains the carbohydrate lactose bile salts and ph indicator neutral red this media is useful to differentiate enteric bacteria on the basis of their ability to ferment lactose on this basis enteric bacteria can be separated into coliform bacilli and dysentery typhoid and para typhoid bacilli another differential selective media used in the microbiology laboratory is mannitol salt agar mannitol salt agar contains a high concentration of salt which is inhibitory to most of the bacteria except staphylococci This medium also helps to differentiate between mannitol fermenting and non-fermenting staphylococci. The indicator phenol red in the medium detects the presence of acid produced by the mannitol fermentation by staphylococci which produces a yellow zone surrounding its growth. Non-fermenting staphylococci will not show change in coloration. Another example is eosin methylene blue otherwise known as levine agar eosin methylene blue agar contains lactose and the dyes eosin and methylene blue that permit differentiation between enteric lactose fermenters and non fermenters as well as identification of colon bacillus e coli the e coli colonies are blue black with a metallic green sheen caused by the large quantity of acid produced by the organism this acid allows the precipitation of the dyes onto the growth surface on eosin methylene blue enteric bacteria that do not ferment lactose produce colorless colonies which because of their transparency appear to take on the purple color of the medium This medium is also partially inhibitory to the gram positive organisms. Enriched media can be also used for the identification of microorganisms. Blood agar help to differentiate the hemolytic microorganisms like streptococci from the non-hemolytic species. On blood agar the streptococci will be producing alpha or beta hemolysis. After studying the morphological and cultural characteristics of the organisms the next step is the study of biochemical reactions of the organisms biochemical tests usually identify a particular enzyme or a specific metabolic end product that is present in the bacteria usually a number of biochemical tests are performed in the microbiology laboratory for the identification of bacteria carbohydrate fermentation test is one of the biochemical tests usually performed in microbiology lab this test is done to determine the ability of microorganisms to degrade and ferment carbohydrates with the production of acid or gas There are many different kinds of fermentable carbohydrates. Not all bacteria 
can ferment all of these carbohydrates. The ability or inability of a particular species to ferment a particular carbohydrate depends on the presence or absence of an enzyme system. The Invict test consists of four different tests indole production, methyl red, Vogus brusca, and citrate utilization test. The name Invict stands for the first letter of the name of each test in the series with the lower case I included for ease of pronunciation. The group of bacteria that can be found in the intestinal tract of humans and lower mammals are classified as members of the family Enterobacteriaceae. Intol tests determine the ability of microorganisms to degrade the amino acid tryptophan. The methyl red and Vogus proscut tests are used to differentiate two major types of facultative anaerobic enteric bacteria that produce large amounts of acid and those that produce the neutral acetoin end product. Citrate utilization tests demonstrate the ability of microorganisms to utilize citrate as the sole source of carbon. The next biochemical test is urease test. Urease test is used to determine the ability of microorganisms to degrade urea by the production of enzyme urease. Coming to nitrate reduction test, this test is performed to determine the ability of some microorganisms to reduce nitrates to nitrites or beyond the nitrite state. The enzyme nitrate reductase possessed by organisms reduces nitrates to nitrites. Catalase test is another important biochemical test performed in microbiology laboratories. This test is used to determine the ability of microorganisms to degrade hydrogen peroxide by producing the enzyme catalase. Oxidase test is used to distinguish bacteria on the basis of cytochrome oxidase activity. Oxidase enzymes play a vital role in the operation of electron transport system during aerobic respiration. The oxidase test aids in differentiation among members of the genera Neisseria and Pseudomonas which are oxidase positive and Enterobacteriaceae which are oxidase negative. Triple sugar iron or TSI test is test helps to differentiate among members of Enterobacteriaceae and also between the Enterobacteriaceae and other groups of intestinal bacilli. So we can summarize like this. In order to identify a particular microorganism or an unknown sample, you have to look into a number of characteristics. The first one is the morphological characteristics. Morphological characteristics can be studied with the help of the microscope. We can make use of the staining techniques also to get details about the morphology and arrangement of the organisms. The second step is the study of cultural characteristics. For cultural characteristics, we can make use of the supportive or the basal media like nutrient agar or nutrient growth. Then comes the biochemical test. We have to perform a series of biochemical tests for the proper identification of the organism. After performing all these experiments, that is, after going through the morphological characteristics, cultural characteristics, and biochemical characteristics, we will be able to clearly identify the unknown sample of bacteria. Thank you so much. See you soon with another topic. Till then, bye.